The cold of the night had settled into my bones by the time I finally set foot in the forgotten village tucked beneath the Carpathians. The place felt haunted. Every shadow seemed to slink away from the moonlight, and even the wind carried a mournful tone. I'd come a long way from Wyoming, drawn by an anonymous journal entry mailed to me three weeks back, pages filled with hastily scribbled notes on sightings and attacks, all pointing to a single, chilling conclusion. Strigoi. The inn was a shabby, time-worn building that creaked with every gust. The wooden sign hanging by the door groaned, Hanul Dintravi, Inn Among the Living, a name that did little to warm the chill in my heart. I pushed open the door, the hinges whining like a lament. Inside, the air was thick with smoke and the smell of old, spiced brandy. A room for the night, I told the innkeeper, a squat man with a face as crumpled as the journal pages that brought me here. He eyed me suspiciously, his accent thick and chewy around the edges. American? Not many tourists here. Especially not now, with all the... trouble. He gestured vaguely with his hand, a sort of there and not there motion that spoke volumes. I'm not a tourist. I'm here on business, I said, keeping my voice even, giving nothing away. I signed the register with a fake name. Old habits die hard. The room he gave me was upstairs, a small space under the eaves with a view of the mist-shrouded mountains. I unpacked the essentials, silver blades, a vial of holy water, and my trusty crossbow, already strung with blessed arrows. As darkness deepened, I ventured out under the guise of a night stroll, my steps silent on the dewy cobblestones. The village was unsettlingly quiet the silence punctuated only by the occasional rustle of wind through the leaves. I made my way to the local cemetery, the most recent site of disturbances, according to the journal. The graves were old, the stones worn and tilted at odd angles. I noticed fresh dirt under a half-collapsed mausoleum, an obvious sign of recent activity. Kneeling beside the disturbed earth, I brushed away the loose soil, revealing a small, torn piece of what looked like a nightgown. It was stained dark with something I knew wasn't mud. A sudden noise, a soft, scraping sound, had me on my feet, hand going to the blade concealed under my jacket. My heart thumped a hard rhythm against my ribs as I scanned the shadowed rows of tombstones. Something moved in the periphery, a wisp of a figure, pale and fleeting. Who's there? I called out, my voice firm. A figure stepped into the moonlight, an old woman, her hair wild around a face as pale as the moon itself. Her eyes were sunken, dark pools in her gaunt face. You should not be here, she hissed, her English broken, the accent heavy, making her words sound like a curse. The dead, they do not rest. Not anymore. And why's that? I asked, keeping my tone neutral, though every instinct screamed that this was more than just local superstition. She moved closer, the smell of the earth and something foul clinging to her. They thirst for the living, she whispered, then turned, disappearing into the mist as silently as she had appeared. I stood there for a moment longer, the chill settling deeper into my bones. Tonight had been a recon mission, but tomorrow the hunt would begin in earnest. As I made my way back to the inn, the weight of my gear felt reassuring against my side. Whatever was out there, I was ready. Ready to hunt. Ready to face the shadows of this cursed place. I woke before dawn, the uneasy sleep filled with visions of shadowy figures flitting just beyond sight. Stepping out into the pre-dawn chill, the village seemed different in the murky light, like a scene from a forgotten dream. Today. The hunt was on, and every sense was heightened. After a quick breakfast of black bread and strong coffee that did little to settle my stomach, I packed my gear. The journal was spread out on the small table in my room, the entries more disturbing in the cold light of morning. Accounts of livestock found drained of blood, whispers of children who spoke in hushed tones of seeing dead relatives wandering at dusk. I set out, heading deeper into the village moving past the tight-knit houses that huddled together as if for comfort against the encroaching wilds. 
The locals avoided my gaze, their faces etched with a mix of fear and resignation. They knew something unnatural was haunting their village, yet there was a silent acknowledgement that this was a part of their world, as much as the mountains and the mist. As I approached the edge of the village, where the ancient woods began, an old man stopped me. He was dressed in a threadbare coat, his eyes bright with an unspoken knowledge. You hunt the darkness, he stated more than asked, his voice a gravelly echo of the forest's whisper. Be wary. The woods do not forgive easily. I'll take any advice you have, I replied, recognizing the wisdom that often came from those who had lived their lives on the edge of these haunted places. The Strigoi are not just in the woods, he said, leaning closer, his breath a puff of steam in the cool air. They come from beneath. Where you tread, watch the ground as much as the trees. Thanking him, I ventured into the woods, the old man's words echoing in my mind. The journal mentioned a cluster of sightings near a dried-up riverbed, and that was where I headed first. The forest was a living thing, its breath the rustle of leaves, its heart the dark soil beneath my boots. I moved silently, every step measured, every breath a calculated silence. Setting up near the riverbed, I waited. The wait, a hunter's silent vigil. Hours passed with the sun climbing reluctantly above the tree line, its rays weak against the dense canopy. It was then I heard it. A soft rustling. Not of leaves, but of something dragging. Something laborious. I readied my crossbow, the bolt armed with a silver tip as taught by ancient lore. Out of the shadows it came. The Strigoi. Its eyes were a ghastly red its body a grotesque parody of the human form it once might have been. It moved with a limping gait, its gaze fixed on the ground as if sniffing the trail of life. I took aim and fired. The bolt flew true, striking it in the shoulder. It screamed, a sound so terrible it seemed to shake the very earth, then turned its glaring eyes on me. With a hiss, it charged, faster than its wounded form suggested. I drew my knife, silver glinting under the sparse sunlight that filtered down. We clashed, the creature's strength formidable, but its movements betrayed a ragged desperation. The fight was brutal, close. I managed to drive the knife into its side, but not before its claws raked across my arm, leaving deep, burning marks. With a final, agonized wail, it collapsed, the life fading from its already dead eyes. Breathing hard, I stood over it, my own blood mixing with the foul ichor that seeped from its wounds. The first Strigoi was down, but I knew this was only the beginning. The journals spoke of more, of a darkness that spread beneath the roots of these ancient woods. As I made my way back to the village, the weight of the encounter heavy on my shoulders, I knew the true hunt was just beginning. Tonight, I would venture into the heart of the woods, into the darkness both feared and revered by the villagers. Tonight, I would hunt not just to kill, but to discover the source of this plague upon the land. As twilight descended upon the village, casting long shadows that seemed to whisper of ancient secrets and forgotten horrors, I prepared for the most perilous part of my hunt. The Strigoi I had encountered was merely a sentinel, a harbinger of the deeper evil festering beneath the gnarled roots of the Transylvanian forest. My gear was laid out methodically, a row of silver-tipped arrows, a flask of holy water, my trusty crossbow, and the large hunting knife with a handle worn smooth by countless encounters. Each item was a familiar weight in my hands, a reminder of battles past and the ones looming ahead. The old man's words echoed in my mind as I ventured back into the forest. They come from beneath. I knew I had to find the source, likely an ancient burial site or a forgotten crypt, where the Strigoi returned to rest and hide from the sun's cleansing rays. The forest at night was a different realm, the air thick with the musk of decay and the dampness of soil that had not seen sunlight in decades. Sounds were magnified, 
A branch cracking underfoot sounded like a gunshot. The hoot of an owl was a mournful wail. Following the map in the journal, I made my way to a particularly dense thicket where the sightings had been concentrated. As the moon carved paths through the darkness, I set up a perimeter of small, consecrated ground traps around an old, decrepit mausoleum that the map pointed to. The traps weren't designed to kill. They were meant to weaken, to wholly burn the creatures and slow their advance. I didn't have to wait long. The earth itself seemed to groan as the first of the Strigoi emerged, its eyes burning coals in the moonlight. It stepped into the first trap, a circle of salt and crushed, sanctified wafers, and screamed as the holy item seared its flesh. I took down the first one with a clean shot through the heart. But there were more. So many more. They came in a silent rush, a blur of twisted limbs and gnashing teeth. I fired arrow after arrow, my aim true. But for every Strigoi that fell, another took its place. When my arrows were spent, I drew my knife, the silver blade gleaming in the moonlight. The battle was a dance of death, brutal and intimate. I sliced through sinew and bone, each cut a desperate prayer. They clawed and bit, their touch like ice, their breath a stench of the grave. One managed to tear at my shoulder, its claws digging deep, but I shoved my knife up through its jaw, silencing it forever. As dawn approached, the few remaining Strigoi retreated back to the shadows from whence they came. I followed the trail of black, Icarus blood to the mausoleum. Inside, the air was thick with the stench of death and decay. In the crypt, I found them. The nests of the Strigoi, and at the center, the ancient sarcophagus of their progenitor. A relic from a darker age. With no time to spare, I used what remained of my holy water dousing the sarcophagus and the nests. The reaction was immediate and violent. The nests burst into holy flame, the fire spreading quickly, consuming everything. Exhausted, bleeding, and breathing heavy from the fight and the fire, I stumbled out of the mausoleum just as the structure began to collapse, sealing the evil away once more. The first rays of the sun touched my face, warm and cleansing. As I walked back to the village, the forest seemed quieter, the oppressive weight of dread lifted. The villagers would wake to a new day, their nightmare ended by one more night's work. Back at my inn, I cleaned my wounds and packed my gear. My work here was done, but I knew somewhere, in another shadowed corner of the world, the night would always hold more tales, more monsters. For now, though, I allowed myself a small smile. The hunt was brutal, the cost high but the victory was clear. In the end, the hunter walks alone, and the shadows wait.